Ja, vormittags, ja? Ja, okay, wieder hören. You must be very excited. Yes, we are. Uh, it's a very important moment in television history. Uh, we're all very high on uh, adrenaline. Uh, and, well, today is day one. Wish us luck. That's a script. Good, thank you. Are we ready, everybody? Good, let's go. Nigel! Oh, Brendan, sorry I'm late. I had a breakfast meeting. You know how they go. No, I don't. It's all right. Come along. You'll be fine. Just, you want to have a cup of coffee? Is it in here? Yeah, in there. It's all right. You'll be all right. Looks like it's fine, yeah. Uh, Zebedee Boeing? Mm. No, 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 no. Ah, that's the one. That's it. We have Boeing. Right, we're ready. Good. All right, everybody. Stand by. Magic Roundabout, episode one, take one, Sugar Lump Mountain. Good luck, everybody. Cue. In, in five. Five. Oi, you, putty face, yuppie chops. Yes, yes, you. What do you think you're doing? Over here, you corduroy clad cretin. It's me, Dougal. Where's Eric? Eric does my voice. Yes, well, I'm supposed to be doing it now, OK? Oh, and who are you, if it's not too much to ask? I'm Nigel. Nigel? Nigel, what? Oh, very hoity-toity. You sound like the manager of a chain of supermarkets. Where's Eric? And do we have a problem here, Nigel? Um, no, no uh, <coughs> just uh, having a bit of trouble with my voice. Actors. Dougal. Dougal. Yes, what is it now, Nigel? Couldn't they have got that Johnny Morris bloke or John Peel to do it? I like him. Yes, well, I got the job, OK? The job? It's a great deal more than a job, you know. Are you qualified? Yes, I am qualified, actually, yeah. Well, then, answer me this, if you can. What colour is Mr Rusty's hat? Um... So... And what are the names of Florence's friends? Hmm? Mm, they're, um... Well, you'd better find out then, hadn't you? Now, where did I put that sugar? Nigel, go, give me strength. You yeah, know, that's all I can remember. I mean, it was made in France, sent to England and retold by Eric Thompson. I mean, that's all there is to know, isn't it? You tell me. Well, it was always a bit weird. Wasn't it made by some deranged 60s freak whose brain was shot to pieces in there? Ah. Hey, do you fancy a lolly? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Sorry about the recording session today. I'll, I'll, I'll make it up. I, All right. I just need another go. It, it, give me time to practice Google's voice. Right. Um, I think I've got. Can you hold that? Yeah. I think I've got a window on. Uh, let me see. Uh, Wednesday, fourth. Uh, oh no, I haven't. Um, How are you about working 11:30 at night? No. Oh, I did. Just relax. All right. Just take it easy. Keep it simple. Just go for a walk like Florence would. What happens whenever Florence goes for a walk? He finds Dougal. Well, that's the attitude. Yeah, right. All right? Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. take it in. Uh, I've really got to go now. Yeah, okay. right. I've got another meeting, but I'll, I'll see you OK, later. it'll be all right. a few meetings for you. What? Well, you want to know about the magic roundabout, don't you? Yeah. Ask the fans. They're everywhere. 
children of the 60s, every walk of life, every strata of society. Look, who is this? It's me, remember? In the park, I gave you a leaflet. Whiz bang. It's 1969 and Britain is swinging to a new beat. Anything goes down in Carnaby Street. So it's time to tune in and turn on and do your own thing and let it all hang out. Oh, sorry, you can't sit there, you know, young man. Yes, Mum can't understand it, but at least there's one thing the whole family agree on. Yes, it's 5.45 and time for the magic roundabout. The whole world's gone magic roundabout crazy. Well, I think up to a certain time, we were just a, a sort of an R&B band churning out Bo Diddley and Chuck Berry's hits, and then we saw Magic Roundabout, and it sort of, we never looked back from that moment on. Most of the poetry that came out of, of Liverpool in those early days had very much to do with the, the roundabout. Um, I remember Brian Patton, Adrian Henry and myself used to meet um, and sit around and watch television, book in hand, even writing things down. And I think it was, a, I don't know, it was the rhythm of the roundabout probably set us off and, and things that were said, movement. Uh, it, was, it was exciting. It was certainly seminal, I, I think that, yeah. What's even more surprising is that this is a children's program with a big adult following as well. Some time ago, the magic roundabout was moved to an earlier time of five to five, and a flood of letters poured into junior points of view. Here are just a few of them. Pay freeze, 50 pound travel allowance, high taxes, and now you've altered the time of the magic roundabout. What else are we children over 30 going to be deprived of? There were more disturbances today in reaction to the rescheduling of the popular television series, The Magic Roundabout. The decision by the BBC to move the programme back to five to five has brought chaos to the country. Offices and factories have been left standing empty as workers desert their posts in order to be home in time to catch the latest adventures of Dougal and his friends. Police were called to deal with demonstrations in most major towns. The Prime Minister cancelled his meeting with the American President and rushed home to catch the programme himself. And now other news, the sugar shortage continues. Uh, men were leaving, machinery unattended, tools were dropped on the moment's notice, dispensary equipment was left to rot and decay simply because people wanted to get home and see the programme. But rather more important than that, in my view, is the political significance. You appreciate that 1966 was a year of great Labour victory. And no one doubts that the political message sent by the programme contributed to that. No coincidence that the year after, uh, the BBC tried to make the programme less available, a conscious decision to undermine democratic socialism. I mean, us adults watched it, and I think it was almost, it was Ionesco, it was Beckett, it tugged at, at, at exactly why we are here on, on this planet, the, the essentials, essentials of existence. So at quarter to six, it was very dangerous indeed, too dangerous for adults, I think. The BBC responded, and the programme is now back to its former time of a quarter to six. Nigel, your agent. Don't ring me, nothing. Hello, Nigel. This is a message from me, Whizbag. The answer is under your nose. Look into the French connection. It's a can of worms. French Connection? The shop? No, not the shop, you idiot! The French Connection! The man who created the story and the character of the Magic Roundabout is Serge Dano, who's here now with his associate, Jean Biard. <laughs> Did you deliberately create it to appeal to adults? Est-ce que tu as créé ça euh, pour les adultes ou au contraire? Euh, un programme qui n'ennuyait pas les parents, tout simplement. He wanted to make a program for children, but at the same time for, for grown-ups too. Well, we've got the models here. The, these are the actual models that you make the program with. It must take a great deal of time to make this. We need 7,500 uh, 7, different uh, photos for a five-minute film, which means 7,500. 7, 500 photographs. Photographs, yes, for so five minutes. So that you take a photograph yeah. 
every several photographs per second. Oh, yes, sir. 25, 25. per second. Magic Roundabout, as far as I was concerned, started with meeting with Dano. He'd already started making puppets of the children, and it was thought that a, a, an animal was needed. A dog, unfortunately, has four legs. It's double the work, shall we say, more or less, and a two-legged animal. It was later at work, talking to a friend uh, who was in the same studio, who saw me drawing dogs, and suddenly said to me, oh, I saw a dog the other day. Uh, look, I'll make a sweet sketch for you. I'd still got the sketch. And as you can see, he drew me doodle. What? What? What's that? Nothing like me. Looks more like a lavatory brush. What pleased us at the time was the possibility his long hairs going to the ground, which would eliminate really the viewing view of the legs we wouldn't have to animate them. Uh, cogs were put underneath, uh, and really all we had to do was to push him about. Pushed about? No one pushes me about. I've got a perfectly good pair of legs, thank you very much. Can I tell you something about the French uh, reaction about the, the De Gaulle name? Je raconte une histoire, tu sais, de, de De Gaulle. Uh, we, we, we all thought that uh, when you spoke of De Gaulle, we were very afraid about our, uh, I mean, uh, our ministry, our foreign ministry, uh, and we thought it was uh, it was Mr. De Gaulle, the president, you know, and yes, <laughs> and, uh, we were afraid about that, but it, it's all right. Nigel, Nigel, what do you think you're doing? You pumpkin, you bumbling buffoon brain, you're disappearing up your own channel tunnel. I've got nothing to do with President De Gaulle. I was retold by Eric Thompson. I'm a British institution, not a French poodle. Eric Thompson did our voices. Eric, not Sasha Distel. Oh, Bob Harris, why couldn't they have got you to do it? Oh, well, what about Clement Freud? Now, don't tell me he was too busy. Shut up, Dougal. Tonight in the South Bank Show, Eric Thompson. Eric Thompson is the sort of man who used to be referred to unselfconsciously as a man of many parts and many talents. He was an actor, he was a writer, he was a director, he directed some of Alan Akeborn's first plays, but most famously, he wrote The Magic Roundabout, the world's first psychedelic program. Eric Thompson entered television as a writer and presenter on the children's program, Play School. We'll make this into a little drum for little Ted. Now, first of all, I shall need a piece of string that and a knitting needle in the business people remember him as a lovely man as a lovely director he was an actor originally he was a stage crew and everything but the general public he will always be the voice of the magic roundabout Dougal he will always be Dougal no gratitude said Dougal to himself I mean, we were working together for about three years and he would just sort of go and project these things on the back of his front door he had a, a cinema projector and he would literally just project it at home because videos hadn't been invented then. And he would just do dialogue to the images, to the pictures. It came completely sort of off the top of his head. Not even a lump of sugar is a reward. Alas for dogs. Well, I think the most profound effect has been really in the, in the broadcasting arts. I mean, the mechanical media. I mean, look. Good night, good night. Hey, Nigel, still having trouble with your voice? No, my voice is fine. It's just I've got all these other voices going round my head. Well, if you can hear it in your head, why don't you just, like, say what you can hear? No, 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 no. It's, 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 it's not as simple as that. I mean, I've, I've got to understand this thing, right? I mean, but I, I just keep going round and round in circles. Well, that's the way it should be, man. You've just got to, like, slow down and let it happen. Yes, but how can something just happen? Like the man said, keep it simple. If you, like, believe something will happen, then it will. He's right, you know, said Florence. And health inspectors say you shouldn't eat any more because it contains too much sugar. We've just heard some sad news for all fans of Dougal and Florence and Zebedee and all the others on Magic Roundabout. After more than 10 years, the roundabout is coming to a halt. 
the BBC have just announced that the present series will be the last. I was really choked, you know, because I, di I didn't know what was on the piece of paper. It was suddenly handed to me during the bulletin, and uh, sometimes a great disaster you suddenly have to talk about. And, and uh, this, to me, was a disaster. It was a disaster for all my audience, all the children who'd been brought up on Magic Roundabout. It, it was a, a heck of a shock and uh, a very sad piece of news to have to tell the nation. Um, and my thought was, you know, what's going to happen to all those, especially to the older members of the cast, you know? Mr. Rusty, people like that. It's all right for the younger ones, Florence and Dougal, but what's Mr. Rusty going to do? Well, that's the way it should be, man. You've just got to, like, slow down and let it happen. If you, like, believe something will happen, then it will. Well, can I come in? No, push off! Of course, I knew that would happen, you know. You should have asked me. I've got friends in high places at the Beeb. Oh, yes, I'm very well connected. Just say Dougal sent you. <laughs> you were working for the BBC at the time of the Magic Roundabout. Is that right? No. Maybe. Ah. Uh, um, uh, but I believe you have some information as to why the Magic Roundabout was taken off. Uh, no. Oh, you don't? Maybe. No. I thought you did. No. Oh, this is hopeless. Cut. Sorry, Nigel, love. Blew it. No, 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 you were marvellous. Sorry. No, don't worry. Can we get a cup of coffee for Leslie? Please, love one. Here I am in the vaults of the BBC. Here I am in the vaults of the BBC, surrounded by all the classic children's television series. Pugwash, Sooty, Nog in the Nog. And now I'm going to find the original BBC recordings of the Magic Roundabout. Leap and Booster. Bill and Ben. Last Thursday evening, we sat as a family and we saw a programme and it was the dirtiest programme that I have seen for a very long time. I think it was the messages. There were obviously subliminal messages on it. Um, that, that's where we got subliminal messages from ourselves, which we used to, to great effect, you know, to tell the public to go out and buy our records. Could you perhaps explain the mystery of why the programme was taken off at the height of its popularity? I'm afraid that's something that's impossible to discuss publicly at this moment. In 30 years' time, when the Cabinet papers are available, well, then some of it may come out, though I fear all of it will not. But at the moment, national security is rather more important than the historical facts about the programme. Whiz bang. Why did they take the magic roundabout off? Florence was pregnant. Brian had been offered his own miniseries. I want some real answers. Why did they take it off? You still haven't got it, have you, Nigel? It goes all the way to the top. You mean Michael Gray? Did he take it off? You're asking the wrong questions, Nigel. What do you mean? It's not why they took it off. It's why it's come back that matters. They're now bringing back the programme which perhaps most of all represents the conflict between capital and labour and the eventual victory of the people. I think that's very, very exciting. And the fact we're going into Europe and the EQ and all that gubbins and... Uh... It is. It's a, it's a whole new era. And uh, the reason they're bringing it back, of course, the Magic Roundabout, is... Um, I've no idea. You know, there's been this lost generation of young people who didn't see the Magic Roundabout in the 70s and 80s. And we've seen what's happened. This sort of gloomy, self-satisfied, grasping generation has emerged. And I think now there'll be a new generation of people who've seen the Magic Roundabout again. And these young people now be our, our hope for the future.
And I'm really, keep my fingers crossed. <laughs> Then we'll begin. Mark Summers, DJ and record producer. You actually produced an acid house version of the theme of the Magic Roundabout. That's right. Yeah, well, why did you do that? Um, well, it's something that's never actually happened to me before. I've kept on getting these messages sent to me. Really what, weird. What, like voices? Like voices. In your yeah. head? Yeah, that's right. A really weird sort of psychic phenomenon, like in Close Encounters. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, how did they manifest themselves? I mean, well, um, it's all to do with the theme tune of the music yeah. itself. It's, it's yeah. built into the theme tune. Let me show you. Oh, right. Okay, now if you transpose that up, yeah. 10 semitones, and then reverse the whole thing round. What, like play it backwards? Play it backwards. Yeah. It comes out like this, really amazing. Incredible, isn't it? Um, yeah. Children of the 60s. Too dangerous for adults. The French connection. You, you bumpkin. You, you bumbling bum boom brain. June to undermine democratic socialism. You were certainly seminal. Like Tony it Hancock. was Mr. de Gaulle. The roundabout is coming to a halt. And it was the dead throat. Obviously subliminal message, isn't it? Oh, Sir Michael, uh, your greatness. Um, I just wanted to ask you some questions. I'm really glad to see you. Uh, about the magic roundabout. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, I believe you were at the BBC at the time. Yeah? Yes. Uh, well, why did they take it off? You really want to know the truth? Yes. Yes. I honestly don't know the truth. Oh, simple. Some idiot took it off, and that was the end of it. Anyway, I have to go. Thanks very much. It's been lovely talking to you. I love France, said Florence. Can we go? Mais certainement, said Dougal, in French. If you like, believe something will happen, then it will, will. Right, right, right. Bonjour. Bonjour. Monsieur Dano. Dano. Oui, Dano. Dano. No, Dano. Dano, Dano. Manège Enchanté. Magic Roundabout. You know, Dougal. 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 Ah, ouais, Dougal. That was tough. Wow. Yeah, He was a dog. Dougal, the wife is not a dog. Tick tock, tock, wake up, Nigel. Time for the recording. Bring! Okay, Nigel, ready for a take? And in five. Wow, like this freaky deja vu time. Four. Hello, Nigel. Happy lentils, man. Three. Where's Google? Two. Let's break those legs. One. Here we go. Good luck. Zero. You're up a bit late, aren't you? Working hard? I must have fallen asleep. It's half past one in the morning. It's not, is it? No. I'm just winding you up, Nigel. They've all gone down the pub. Do you want this? It's been sugared. No, thanks. Time for bed. Another magic round.
roundabout spins again here on 4 on Thursday the 2nd of January at 7.35 in the morning. Begun. <laughs> you raise your hockey stick.